Hello, my name is Kevin McDonnell. I'm a solution architect at CPS. Uh, one thing I was just wondering was if you try and create a, a header extension on a hub site, does it sit above or below the menu? As I was about to do it, I thought why not record it and let you have a look too. So let's take a look. So what I have here is a hub site called the portfolio site and I've created a, another team site called the property site and as you can see we have the common header if I click on that that will take me to the portfolio site so I have the link between the two very simple I haven't set anything else uh, on top of that what we're looking to do is to have a custom search um, for reasons that I won't go into too much detail because it'll only cause arguments with some people, but we want to have an additional search box that only searches particular areas. Uh, and my, the question is, when I add this, will it be above or below this menu? Um, what I can see from the uh, extension page on the SharePoint Docs Online Deployer extension. You can see there when you have the placeholder, you see the top area of the page and the bottom area of the page. So the question is, on a hub site, where does that appear? Let's get on to developing a, uh, let's go into developing an extension. As you can see here, I uh, typed yo, and remembered that uh, this is a relatively new laptop and I haven't installed a lot of things. So uh, another good opportunity to run through how to do that. Um, I have within here setting up your SharePoint framework, another one of the great docs from Microsoft on SharePoint. Under the getting started, they're setting up your development environment. So first step is to get Yeoman and Gulp installed. So what I'm going to do is copy the NPM install paste that in there and hit enter that will go off and start grabbing all the different pieces you want uh, if you're not sure what yeoman is again there's lots of good documentation there but effectively it allows you to generate um, from boilerplate sets of code to the common templates for code um, and run those which really just gets you started a lot quicker uh, the other one mentioned there is gulp uh, that allows you to run some automated tasks uh, using nodes and scripts within there and its own fun and games, which I uh, you can read more about within there. Effectively, those things allow you to get started. It will take a few minutes uh, and I, I will warn you, it does install quite a bit of things when you put the template in. So just be ready for that. While that runs, I'll just go and take a look at the next step which is to install the Yeoman SharePoint generator. So you can see this is the at Microsoft, to, at Microsoft generator dash SharePoint. This is the actual Yeoman ten, template itself for doing SharePoint framework um, work, uh, basically. So this will create a scaffold project. You can see more information that you can drill into on there. I'm going to pause the video and I'm, I'm going to run, finish off this install and finish off the install the generator uh, and come back when that's all done. So you can see that's now completed. Uh, I've completed the installation of uh, Yeoman and Gulp and also installed the SharePoint generator. Now I've flicked onto the next page, uh, not the next page, but a later page here. Under extensions in the documents, there's build your first extension. And uh, you may wonder why I record a video when I could just point at this documentation. I would recommend just having a look at this documentation and stepping through, but uh, I wanted to show all the steps as I go along. So you can see here, I'm just gonna follow through the steps of creating the directory. See my uh, non-client folder, so I'm going to make a directory and I'll call it uh, SPX extension header hub site test. A little bit of a mouthful, maybe should have shortened that, but uh, well, I have two shorts to shorten. Uh, moving on to the next one, going into there, and I'm going to kick off the running of the generator itself. Whoops. You may find if you if you haven't used the SPX, uh, SPFX for a while, uh, ooh, asking for usage stats, I, I won't in this case, but it's always nice to do that if um, that is your want and you're not doing anything confidential. 
um, make sure you've got the, the latest as you run through. You'll see I've just downloaded it for the first time, would have got the latest Yeoman, would have got the latest SPF, SPFX generator, worth just making sure we have all those. Now you can see, let's create a solution name. It's already picked up the uh, name from the folder and I'm happy to stick with that. Uh, which baseline package would you like to include? Now I'm going to go for SharePoint Online only in this case. Uh, I'm going to use the current folder because I've already placed myself into the, the solution folder. Do you want to allow the tenant admin the choice of being able to deploy the solution to all sites immediately without running any features? Uh, I'm going to say yes for this one. Will the component solution require permission to access web APIs? Um, they won't because it's going to be a very basic one, but you may have yours. Uh, getting on to the important bit there, which type of client side component to create? I'm going to create an extension. And in this case, it's an application customizer. The other options are field customizer. So we have a custom field within a SharePoint list. You can add some specific customizations and then uh, a list view command set. But for the header and footer extensions, we're going to there. What are we going to call it? Maybe we can call this something a little simpler. SP, uh, let's call this header extension hub test. Uh, description, I should be good in that description, but I won't in this case. That will create all the details I need and pull everything from the SharePoint GitHub uh, and load that onto the page for me, which is fantastic. It will take a few minutes. I'm um, going to keep the, the actual contents of it uh, pretty simple um, and not add too much more onto the actual piece on there. Um, we'll probably pick very similar to the, um, the the version that's in the document here. You can see it, it did talk through all the sections needed there. Uh, and what's the, the answers on things? I'm just going to skip sub for it skip ahead a little bit um, you can see this first extension was just about having a, uh, a header I'm actually going to look at the use page placeholders so I really only care about that part you can see some simple changes that are going to go in with that and I'm just going to keep, keep this and keep the same bit of code as this uh, and just see if that appears above or below the menu that's still ticking along nicely so I think given that, I'm going to take a little pause. Uh, being English, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea uh, and come back when that's finished. OK, I'm fully refreshed now. Uh, apologies, you wouldn't go to pause unless you pause this video, but uh, do 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 that. Go and have a cup of tea. Uh, as you can see, it's completed now and I can run this solution with Gulp Serve. So uh, I mentioned that the that Gulp is used to run a set of tasks, including those is the Gulp serve that will spin up a local web server uh, running in Node and allow you to run your extension. So we'll just kick that off, waiting a second for that to complete. Fantastic. So uh, with the Gulp, it's running through a various sets of tasks. Um, you can see things like copy static assets, uh, SAS, which will take the style sheets written in SAS, convert them to CSS and merge a lot of those together, bring, try and reduce the size of the overall package, um, various other items there, bundling together, uh, running Webpack to bundle together some of the code. You can see copy assets, all sorts of fun and games uh, that go through there. Now, I've run this completely independently. And if I drag over this window, it's trying to pop up in my other screen. You can see that by default, it's trying to get to contoso.sharepoint and deploy onto there, um, which is not really very helpful because I don't own contoso.sharepoint. Uh, I'm sure that does exist somewhere, but Microsoft's keep, kept it well hidden. Uh, so what I can do is just, well, actually, I can leave, I could leave that running. I'm going to stop that a sec. With, uh, that was a control C just to cancel always worth remembering and um, from here I can open up this code so I tend to use Visual Studio Code so I'm going to do code dot which will open Visual Studio Code at that location 
So no more opening up Visual Studio and then go through the browser, the, the big long path you've created. Use Visual Studio code and it will open it very simply and easily at that location. And I will make that a little larger for you since it's finished opening up. And you'll see we, we've selected the Explorer view here and you get a few of the contents within there. Um, various bits within here, you can see there's lots of uh, config files, uh, a lot of these related to TypeScript, so you shouldn't need to touch many of those. There's the package file, which you could be could use for setting the version numbers of the actual code itself um, and any of the node package manager npm dependencies you've got in there by default because we've used that yeoman template it's copied stuff across already you'll find uh, a large amount within config so if we look in config json we start to get an idea of the different components what it loads by default again no real need to touch that copy assets again Again, it will be where it's copied some of the details from and if you're deploying to the CDM where that will go uh, if you want to deploy into Azure storage it will put the details into there um, some details about the package solution and you'll see I was probably jumping and stuttering slightly because what I was looking for was exactly that the contoso.sharepoint.com probably could have searched for it but it's always nice to go through a few elements there and what I'm going to change it to is my own SharePoint, so the CPS Global Dev. And let's just swap out the uh, Contoso there, and also the name of the site and page. Um, and I will just put it onto the home page. Actually, let's create, no, let's just put it on the home page. So if I go on to that, hopefully, it will give me the full path. There we go. So I'll just pull the full page URL onto there, paste it into that one, paste it into that one, and just do a Control S to save, or you can click File Save, uh, depending if you're keyboardy or mousey. And let's go up and up and up and run that gulp serve again. <coughs> Excuse me. And see if we can point it at the right place should always be a useful step. So we'll just wait for that to run a minute. Now one nice warning there about when serving in HTTPS mode, um, you should buy a certificate, etc, etc. Expect browser security warnings, uh, as if by magic, if I bring this page across. Um, if you don't know what to do, click here. That would be a useful thing in many things in life. But uh, in this case, we're going to load those debug scripts. Um, and it didn't like accessing those, I imagine, because of the HTTPS. So set up your framework environment. So this was in the original setup development environment. There was a final step that I, I didn't show originally because I wanted to create the project first. But you'll see there's actually a gulp task within there. Um, for setting up. So I'm going to jump back, uh, cancel this, cancel the running gulp serve. Um, now another thing I did notice there is uh, make sure you have your dependencies installed with npm install. Uh, I believe it would have run that uh, already as part of the installs I've done, but uh, there's no harm in triggering it. Now what, what that does, if you're, you're not sure, the npm install is if I jump into code, I'm just going to close the other one to stop me getting confused. Um, in the, I, I showed briefly before the package.json, you can see a set of dependencies. And what the npm install does is goes and looks in the node package manager site for those dependencies, that particular version, and it will go install it. And you will see here the node modules. So if I expand that, you'll see there's at Microsoft. SP core library 1.8.2. And if I go and look at the package.json for that one, I can see that that package is 1.8.2. Now you may be wondering why there's lots of other things there as well. Um, obviously this package itself 
has a set of dependencies, such as types, jest, ms, sp, lots of ones there. And those package will have lots of dependencies. And those package will have lots of dependencies. And very soon you end up with a list with lots and lots and lots of dependencies. Um, something for another video at a time, but uh, dealing with dependencies is one of the fun and games uh, with this modern way of working. So uh, let's close that off for now and return to the command window. Uh, you can see that npm installs run nicely. Very few th messages there, which suggest that it had run correctly before. You will notice that there are a, a newish thing on uh, npm is some details on uh, any vulnerabilities found, and there there are some. You will find a lot of these. Uh, it's worth keeping a good eye on the higher ones uh, when you are deploying this into production, but um, not something I'm going to cover at the moment. Uh, what I will do is. Oh, didn't have that copied and pasted. Uh, is return to setting up this and just again copy that gulp trust dev cert. Turn and paste that there. Um, again, go go to this site. I, I can provide links in the any posts uh, joining with this um, and read some of the details. It is all about setting up SSL. Uh, do I want to install a certificate? Yes, I am happy with that. And if I try and, whoops, this is why I copy and paste most of the time because I can't type. Gulp serve. And you'll see, you know, copy and paste, it is your friend. If you're not used to typing lots of command and you, you are prone to mistyping things, use copy and paste, um, use the details there. So now I've set that up, uh, I have a working extension. The only problem with my extension is there's nothing in it yet, so it's not the most exciting. Uh, I think that was probably the default message that pops up. Let's just run that again. I think I clicked a little bit too quickly. There we go. So when you run the extension, the default one says hello from the uh, hello from the header extension hub test application customizer. I realize that may be a bit small for some people. Um, and I will try and zoom in on some of the other items. But for now, we're going to pause. Uh, and come when we come back, we'll look at actually adding something into the header extension. Okay, and we're back again. So I'm going to go back to the node window now and just uh, again do Control C to cancel the running tasks there. Um, now we have everything set up to put the uh, the header placeholder in. I'm going to install the in fact, this copy and paste, as I mentioned before. Over here, you will see that uh, one of the recommendations is to install Office UI Fabric Core. The reason for this is just gives you many of the styles and details within there. So I'm going to copy and paste that and install UI Fabric. If you are looking at using UI Fabric, let's just uh, bring that across. If you search for Office UI Fabric, uh, using Bing, of course, or there are other search engines available, apparently. Um, then you can search and find details for that. So you've got UI Fabric. Um, you can see details getting started. Generally, you want to look at the web, uh, and you'll see generally the web ones are for Fabric. Uh, they've improved this quite a lot recently, so you can start to look at the colors and the kind of common products used. You can even drill into SharePoint, see what different colors are for the different applications. Look at some of the neutrals and the shared colors. Uh, obviously, you could define your own as well, but it gives you a lot to go on with there. Gives you a lot with the layouts. If you've used things like Bootstrap before as a developer, um, there's a, a style of grid that comes with that. There are also even more things such as animations. So we can see some of these. In fact, if we play that, you can get some of the indication of how the uh, animations apply and slide and add. They try to keep these relatively subtle and simple, but just give a, a little bit to your application. Uh, as well as that, and I'm trying to remember where that sits now. You can see there's a theme, uh, theme designer, which is great. Um, but there's also some of the controls that they are along the bottom. So you can start to use controls and buttons and some of the details uh, like that to, to really get it to look like the rest of your SharePoint site. So just flip back and see that's now installed, which is great. So we're going to jump into 
uh, code again and following the, the document uh, on my other screen, the joys of having two screens and being able to split those nicely. Uh, under source extensions and then name of your extension, it, it does talk about in the document, it assumes you've created it as hello world. Um, I hate calling things hello world, so I do try and avoid that as much as possible. Um, but under there is to add a new document. So we're going to add a new file and we're going to call it the appcustomizer.module.scss. So if you've done any CSS, um, whether liking it or uh, as many people absolutely hating it, the difference here is this is uh, SAS. It's very similar and you'll, you'll recognize a lot of things, but it makes it a little easier about um, the, the layout and reusing elements within there. So I'm just going to copy from the, the other screen, the example that it lives there. So I can see that it's gonna add uh, within the app, it's got a top, it's got a height of 60, um, it's going to put the text in the center. It's going to give it the primary color theme, which has come from uh, UI Fabric. Um, and at the bottom, very similar thing, but only 40 high. Um, so next, if we open up the application, uh, where's it gone? If we open, sorry, Hello World uh, Application Customizer TS. And we go and look at that, and we just need to add in the top there a couple of lines, which will point it towards the uh, that style that we've just mentioned, uh, just created, and also something called escape uh, on there. Now I did call it a different name, so I need to make sure uh, I went for the English format with this Z, which is pedantic and is probably going to come back and bite me later, but uh, I will stick with that for now. So that should be app customizer dot module dot scss. Ah, it's just saying it's um, declared but not used, which is why I'm getting that line under there. Uh, so moving down, we're going to look at the TS file again. Uh, we're going to look at the properties within there. Uh, I'm going to add two two strings to describe that. So you can see we get test message in there. We don't need that anymore. So we can replace that as it says in the message with our own values. So this I imagine is going to be the text that's going to go in the top and bottom of the customizer. Um, following through the next, we need to uh, add to the default class itself. Um, within here, the export class, this is where the, the real action happens. So we're going to add those, cannot find name placeholder content. Ooh, wonder what that is. Let's just have a quick look, make sure I haven't missed any steps. Okay, I'll come back and hope that uh, works okay later. Uh, the next one is for the on it. So you can see the, the previous one, it had a message and it would do an alert on that message as we saw. Um, I'm just gonna overwrite that with the one from the page to instead, uh, in this case, we're just gonna say when the placeholder changes, then render the placeholders. And you'll see we're getting an error on that. And it's no such thing as render placeholders because very conveniently the next step above includes a very long method which is where we will put the render placeholders. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail of what this does uh, apart from find out why placeholder name doesn't uh, it doesn't like it. Uh, you can go through the documentation and have a look at that. There's some nice details on the explanation there. Uh, and then the final one we just need to add an on dispose at uh, the bottom there. Um, you may notice something I'd highly recommend if you're doing a lot within code. Uh, there is a, uh, I've forgotten the name, I'll, I will add it to the notes, but a, a, a rainbow definition on your brackets. So you can see, for example, here, the brackets here are red, so I know that those two are paired together. The brackets here are orange, so those paired together. Makes it a lot easier to make sure you're closing your brackets and putting things at the right levels. So next step, we need to move to the serve.json. 
um, in the config folder, which is up there, the one that we changed the uh, file name there. And we need to add within there, instead of the properties test message, we need a top. These are the properties passed through to the web part. Top and say, hi, I am up for the top. And another one for bottom. I am sadly stuck at the bottom where no one reads, reads me. Um, and we do that for both of those. So let's just copy and paste that down into the properties. Okay, that's all looking good. Let's just uh, do a file, uh, let's do a save all. So if you're using code, nice little quick click there to save all your open ones. Let's go back to node, up, up, and go observe. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I have a feeling this might error, whatever that placeholder name was, but uh, we'll cross our fingers and hope for now. I'm just going to jump back to this browser to make sure it opens in this window. Let's see, is that doing anything? Um, those of you who are eagle-eyed may have noticed after last pause that the number of uh, windows down the bottom of the screen has decreased. Uh, we're starting to run out of memory because I get a little bit tab happy with opening lots of tabs uh, within the new Edge. Um, edge or Edgium or Edge Chromium browser, uh, and it does eat up a lot of memory. So I just cleared some of those out. Let's just try and cancel that, just see what's going on. I'd usually expect it to give me some nasty error message rather than just sitting there doing nothing. That's woken up. Okay, Ooh, that looked good. So load debug scripts. And we still got the alert. Didn't really want the alert anymore. Uh, but we're not getting through the header and the footer. So let's see, do we get any error messages coming through here? There we go. Cannot find name placeholder content. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a little pause while I dig through what that is and then come back shortly. So, as I suspected, uh, I had missed a step. Uh, if I just pull the guidance over here, uh, it is something to remember that if you talk and waffle on while you're meant to be doing things, you are likely to miss steps. So, where I added the SESS here, it's also a line for adding content. So, you can see uh, as well as importing the styles, which I did, I missed the importing of the placeholder content. So let's put that back over there and slide that along the top. Um, I'd love to hear from people if you have any conventions you use in terms of order um, of things that you, you add there. In fact, we can see we've already added that one there. Um, if you have any logic, if you try and group it together in alphabetical order, uh, if you try and get custom ones or things, uh, I would love to know uh, how you do that. I do try and organize it. it. It's certainly grouped by the different functions and things on there, but I haven't really found a way that, that I'm 100% happy with and I always apply to everything. So I uh, would definitely love to hear from anyone who's managed that. Okay, if we go back now, hopefully this has uh, recompiled automatically because we have the uh, hot reload on and I can go into the site and let's see what happens if I refresh that. Load the debug scripts and there is our answer. A hideous brown colour that doesn't sit with the rest of it, but it answers the question that when we add a placeholder, it appears above the menu. Um, which I think is nice because then you can have the, the same theme colour uh, and make that look like a continuous block. Uh, obviously, you don't necessarily need to have it as big as that, rather than having the white menu and then the uh, an extra colour underneath it. So I think that certainly suits my needs nicely. Uh, Long-winded way of saying it fits there. 
but uh, I hope that might help some people to get started with putting placeholders in. Thank you very much.